What is popping YouTube? Never sell young running backs unless it's Devon A. Chan. I know in the Dynasty community, running backs as a whole, when we were looking back on the 2021 class, CEH, Jonathan Taylor, Cam Akers, and J.K. Dobbs, what a fabulous class it was. And they came in as rookies. They were hot to try off from the start, and their dynasty value gained a ton. Maybe except Clyde edwards helaire but he was with the Chiefs, so he did have some value insulation there for a little bit. But now fast forward into 2024, and we in the dynasty community, we like to build our teams, especially in Super Flex Leagues, around the wide receiver and quarterback position. Whereas if we're talking even one quarterback, you still like to get the wide receivers, the Yon, the C.D. Lambs, the Jamar Chase, the Justin Jeffersons, Garrett Wilsons, Puka Nakua's on your team more than just having some of these young running backs. So you're going to be saying to me, Caleb, this is not 2021. And I totally understand. But when we're talking guys like Bijan Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, Brees Hall, you're not selling those guys unless you're absolutely rebuilding. You know that you're going to miss their window in the next two seasons. So you trade out of those assets. But a guy like Devon Achan, who had himself an absolutely fabulous year last year, you're going to be saying to me, Caleb, I like Devon Achan. I don't want to sell him. And I'm going to be telling you why you should be looking to sell Devon Achan today. Starting off here, Devon Achan currently right now in the dynasty rankings on Cape Trade Cut. Devon Achan is RB6 overall player 45, which just tells you how much the dynasty landscape has changed over the last three seasons. We got guys like Michael Pittman Jr., Devontae Smith. He's got Kyron Williams, Tank Dell, all right around the same range as Devon. And so you're going to be saying to me, Caleb, why are you telling me that I need to be considering selling some Devon Achan? If we look back on the prospect profile for Devon. We're going to see 5'9", 188, best compared coming out of Texas A&M to Chris Johnson. Now, last year on the channel when we were making rookie content, we said Chris Johnson. We also said every video that you have to compare a guy as small and fast to Devon as Chris Johnson because for some of you youngins that didn't get to see Chris Johnson play for the Tennessee Titans, throw on some of those highlights. Absolutely electric. Absolutely loved having him on my fantasy football team back in the early 2010, 2011, 2012 era. Now, Devon, we haven't seen a lot of these speedsters absolutely produce on a fantasy football level or be a bell cow. So us in the dynasty community, we've typically told you to stay away from guys like this. But this last year, 17.5 fantasy points per game ended up being the RB5. 11 total touchdowns, 800 rushing yards, 7.8 yards per carry. But the biggest downside to Devon was that he only played in 11 total games. So you're going to be saying to me, well, Caleb, he got hurt. Well, yeah, he was absolutely killing it weeks one through week five before on week six got put onto the IR based on his injury and then was out week six to week 11. Came back in week 12. So we're ramping up for the fantasy football playoffs. You did have Devon back then. And like I said, absolutely electric when you look at the metrics. You look at the metrics, you're going to see, you're going to see that he was the RB1 on fantasy points per opportunity. You're going to see that he was RB9 on total yards. You're going to see that he was RB2 on true yards per carry. You're going to say that he was RB5 on fantasy points per game. You're going to see that he was RB1 on fantasy points per opportunity with 1.36. He was RB1 on breakaway run rate, RB3 on juke rate, RB1 on yards per touch. So you're saying to me, Caleb, these metrics are outstanding for a rookie running back. Oh my goodness. He plays for the Miami Dolphins. He plays with Mike McDaniel. We saw how much Mike McDaniel loves to run the ball. Why are you telling me, Caleb? You're being an idiot right now telling me to sell this from Devon. And I'm going to say to you, listen, they just signed Raheem Mostert to a two-year contract extension. Now, that is not going to be enough for me to say, yep, let's get rid of Devon, sell him off all of your dynasty team. But that is something to be considering. Now, we look at some underdog ADP. So we're to look at where he's kind of projected for redraft season. And right now, Devon is the 18th player off the board. He is a second round underdog pick, which is a high expectation for for a running back like Devon after everything that we just said from last year. Now, my biggest concern with Devon continues to be, can he be durable for you and your dynasty roster? Like I said, absolutely killed it weeks one to week six. But then when he came back in week 11, however, he was really modest in his return. 4.3 yards per carry. So yards per carry went down with only 177 yards and two scores on 41 carries. So there was a pretty big drop off in overall fantasy football production for Devon. And so you're going to be telling me like, like, should we, I try to be selling high? And I'm just telling you to sell high because like I said, before the unknown of the off season of maybe they add another running back. I know they re-signed Raheem Mostert, but a lot of people are still high on Devon. Before the NFL draft, I am trying to sell him off my dynasty team. So if we're going to be talking about how he has all these amazing metrics, we've got Raheem Mostert signing back, but I just think at RB6 right now is the time to cash out. Because like I said, with a guy like Devon, can we actually see him getting to be in a top? three or four running back. I mean, we saw the injuries already start to happen in his rookie season. He's only going to be getting a little bit older. Not to say that when you get older as running back that you're just automatically going to be getting injured. It's just a brutal position. And Devon being a smaller guy, already showing a little bit of that injuries, also knowing that his time at Texas A&M, he dealt with some injuries. 
makes me a little bit nervous. Now, if we can look at what some trades, some recent trades that have gone down, we're talking these trades went down today, yesterday. Let's look at, take a look at this. So we got Devon straight up for Jordan Addison. Now, I know a lot of people in the Dynasty space are telling you to sell Jordan Addison. A lot of people aren't remembering that TJ Hawkins is going to be out for the first 10 weeks of the season. I mean, Sam Darnold's not the absolute best quarterback. It's definitely a downgrade from Kirk Cousins. But I like this when you're going from Devon to Jordan Addison, getting that young wide receiver. Maybe there's not a huge points per game advantage that you're going to be gaining with Jordan Addison. But I like this to pivot outside of Devon. Then we got Devon for a 2024 round one pick. I imagine that's somewhere in like the 107 to 109 range. That would be something that I would be willing to do, especially in this draft class, if you can pivot into a young wide receiver. Maybe you get a, a young quarterback. That is a great pick there in a two and a 0.5 tight end premium start seven league. Then we keep moving down and there's some interesting ones. We got Devon for Josh Downs and a 2024 round one pick. You're tearing off of Devon to get to Josh Downs. Josh Downs definitely will keep track cut way lower down the line, but then you make that up with the 2024 round one pick. You kind of divide Devon into two different options there. Gives you a ton of flexibility, even if that is the 110 and Josh Downs for Devon. I like that because you're going to end up with maybe someone like a Brian Thomas Jr. Maybe a quarterback falls. Maybe you just end up with someone like a Xavier Worthy and Josh Downs for Devon. I like kind of pairing off that. Or you can even tear up. We got one that happened on 4-1. We got Devon in a round two pick for Brandon Ayuk. In a one quarterback league, start eight, like that deal to get into Brandon Ayuk there. And my final one that we'll share here, this was done on the fourth. It was a two quarterback, 10 team, one PPR, start nine league. We got Devon straight up for a first. So could this be somewhere in the 107 to 109 range? Probably pretty fair value for Devon. If I know that I'm getting one of those top six or seven guys, send off Devon. Like I said, the RB6 value just feels very, very rich for a young asset like Devon, who has has a lot of question marks and it's not like we're viewing Devon in the same range of we're talking about a Bijan Robinson, a Jabir Gibbs, even a Brees Hall where yes, Devon has the electricity around him. Yes, well, I have a ton of shares of Devon in my underdog leagues, in my redraft leagues and even some dynasty leagues. Yes, but I do think you need to evaluate selling off this young running back, selling off of Devon because I think his value at RB6, can it climb higher? Potentially at one time last season, he was like RB5, RB4, but I don't think he's going to ever break into the top three. And if he does, you can definitely come back, clip this, post it on Twitter, call me out, send it to fantasy receipts, but I'm just not high on Devon. And I think now is the time to sell and get out of this young asset. So let me know what you think of these deals down below. Let me know what you think of Devon down below, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.